When soft, round, donut-shaped red blood cells turn into C-shaped sickled cells, that causes a traffic jam in those blood vessels and a pain in the, well, everywhere. Hi, I'm Krista, and I'm here to discuss all things sickle cell disease for your NCLEX. So what is sickle cell disease? Well, it's a genetic autosomal recessive condition. That means you need two genes in order to have the disease. And that means one gene has to come from each parent. And because this gene originated in Africa, it's more commonly found in black individuals. So red blood cells are usually a nice round donut shape so they can easily flow through those blood vessels. So what happens in sickle cell disease? Well, these red blood cells turn into a C-shaped sickle cell and they become sticky and they clump together in the blood vessels and cause a traffic jam. That leads to decreased perfusion and therefore hypoxia and ischemia. We also see that these red blood cells don't last as long as a normal red blood cell. So normal red blood cells will last about 120 days, while these sickle-shaped cells only last about 10 to 20 days. That leads to increased red blood cell destruction and therefore anemia. That also, in turn, causes decreased perfusion. So what do these clients look like? Well, because they have a decreased number of red blood cells, that leads to anemia and decreased perfusion, and therefore it causes decreased oxygenation. So we see fatigue and pallor, and because of chronic decreased perfusion, it causes delayed growth. Because we have increased red blood cell destruction, where do those red blood cells go to die? Well, they go to the spleen, and that spleen becomes overwhelmed with all those sickled cells and becomes congested and enlarged, and that causes chronic splenomegaly or an enlarged spleen. Over time, that congested spleen becomes damaged, and because the spleen is so important for the immune system, it can increase infection risk in our sickle cell clients. Because there's increased red blood cell destruction, that leads to increased byproducts of that red blood cell destruction, like bilirubin. And increased bilirubin in the blood causes yellow discoloration of the skin, known as jaundice. And remember, jaundice is really hard to assess in our darker skinned clients. So if the NCLEX gives you a client who has darker skin, where do we assess jaundice? We assess darker skin clients with more pigment in their skin in less pigmented areas, like the sclera of the eye and the mucous membranes like inside of the mouth. So now we know what these clients look like in the day-to-day, -day, but how do they look during a crisis? So a sickle cell crisis is an exacerbation of sickle cell disease, and the most common reason for hospitalization is a vaso-occlusive crisis. So there are many factors that cause vaso-occlusive crisis, but the most common ones are hypoxia, dehydration, and infection. And these cause increased red blood cell sickling and clumping of those sticky cells. That leads to that traffic jam in the blood vessels and decreased perfusion, ultimately leading to painful ischemia. So how do these clients look during a crisis? Well, they will have mild to severe pain lasting hours to days. And because these red blood cells clump up in the small vessels, it causes pain in the bones and joints and the hands and feet called dactylitis. It also affects the small vessels of the penis and causes painful erection. And when that painful erection lasts greater than four hours, that's a medical emergency known as priapism. And we need to notify that healthcare provider right away. Now for our first quick check, take a moment to answer these questions. Where should the nurse assess jaundice in clients with darker skin? Well, remember, we assess darker skin clients who have more pigment in their skin in less pigmented areas, like the sclera of the eye and the mucous membranes like inside of the mouth. Then what are the major triggers of vaso-occlusive crisis? Well, those are those things that increase that RBC sickling and clumping in the blood vessels. So those are things like dehydration, hypoxia, and infection. So nursing care for sickle cell disease focuses on providing hydration and oxygenation, managing pain, monitoring for complications, and providing prevention teaching. So on the NCLEX, what's always our priority? Well, it's those ABCs. And remember, in a vaso-occlusive crisis, we have that sickling and clumping that causes a traffic jam in those blood vessels. And that leads to decreased circulation, that C from our ABCs, and decreased oxygenation. 
Therefore, our number one priority is treating what causes that vaso crisis. And those triggers are that hypoxia and dehydration. And so we need to treat that by providing hydration and oxygenation. So we provide oral and IV fluids in order to treat that dehydration and get those red blood cells moving. We also maintain bed rest because bed rest is needed to decrease that oxygen demand because these clients can have hypoxia. Then we also administer oxygen as needed and that helps treat that hypoxia as well as prevent any further sickling of those red blood cells. So we give hydroxyurea, which increases production of normal non-sickled hemoglobin, and we give blood transfusions to introduce more normal red blood cells into circulation, and these both do the job of increasing perfusion and decreasing clumping of those blood cells. So remember, sickling causes decreased oxygenation that leads to ischemia, which is super painful. So as nurses, we need to help manage pain. We do this by giving high-dose analgesics for severe pain, things like opioids, such as morphine. So if the NCLEX gives you a client who has severe 10 out of 10 pain, even though you gave them pain medication an hour ago, does that mean that they're seeking drugs? No, because these clients are often in severe ischemic pain, they require higher doses than normal. These clients can often be falsely accused of being drug addicts because they require so much pain medication. So if their pain is unrelieved, we need to notify that healthcare provider. They might need around the clock dosing or higher doses of pain medication. So these clients also need to avoid meperidine because that can increase seizure risk in sickle cell clients. So we also need to use non pharmacological techniques such as applying warm compresses. Warm compresses vasodilate and increase perfusion which decreases ischemic pain. We don't use cold compresses because that can cause vasoconstriction and increase that ischemic pain. So sickle cells clump together and accumulate in all body systems. So we need to monitor for complications of sickle cell crisis. So when there's vaso occlusion of the small vessels in the brain, that leads to a stroke and that causes findings like facial droop, slurred speech, and one-sided weakness. So when there's vaso occlusion of the small vessels of the lungs, that causes acute chest syndrome. And these findings are really similar to pneumonia. So we see high fever, cough, and chest pain. When sickle cells clump up and cause blood to pool within that spleen, that's called acute splenic sequestration. And when there's pooling of blood in the spleen, that causes sudden splenic enlargement. And because there's so much blood in that spleen, it's not circulating the rest of the body, and it causes signs of hypovolemic shock, like increased heart rate and decreased blood pressure. When a viral illness like parvovirus causes decreased red blood cell production or increased red blood cell cell destruction, that is called aplastic crisis, and that leads to a severe drop in red blood cells and profound anemia. If you see any of these findings in a sickle cell client, you need to report them immediately. So for our next quick check, take a moment to answer these questions. So how does a nurse manage pain for vaso-occlusive crisis? We give high-dose analgesics to help that severe pain, and we give warm compresses because that helps vasodilate, which helps decrease that ischemic pain. What are signs of acute chest syndrome? Well, remember, those signs are similar to pneumonia, things like fever, cough, and chest pain. So remember our three major triggers for sickle cell crisis. That is dehydration, hypoxia, and infection. So as nurses, our teaching needs to focus on preventing these three things from happening. We can do that by encouraging fluids and breaks from activity in order to decrease risk for dehydration. To prevent infection, we give prophylactic penicillin until age five because that is when they're most vulnerable to infection. And we give vaccines. Then we also have them seek care immediately for a fever greater than or equal to 101.3 Fahrenheit or 38.5 degrees Celsius. And we have them report signs of complications like we talked about before, like acute chest syndrome and stroke. So we need to have them avoid things that can start a sickle cell crisis. 
things like high altitudes because there's decreased atmospheric oxygen that can lead to hypoxia. They also need to avoid temperature extremes like extremely hot or cold places. We need to have them avoid contact sports like football if that spleen is enlarged because any pressure on that spleen can lead to splenic rupture, which is life-threatening. For our last quick check, take a moment to answer these questions. How do clients with sickle cell disease prevent dehydration? Well, they need to drink fluids and take breaks during activity. Then what should clients with an enlarged spleen avoid? Well, because they have the enlarged spleen, they're more at risk for splenic rupture. So they need to avoid contact sports like football to decrease the risk for splenic rupture. Now you've mastered sickle cell disease for your NCLEX.